honestly, another way I can describe all this is moving back here to Canada. It just doesn't feel like me anymore or who I want to become. And don't get me wrong, Canada is a beautiful country and Canadians are amazing. And it's not anything like that. It just feels like taking two steps back in life. I've also been through a lot of bad stuff here. I've been through good stuff and bad stuff here. And that's why I am having some counseling while I'm here because to try to just come to terms with why some of the bad feelings, you know, make me feel the way I do while I'm here. So anyway, I know my life is a roller coaster and most of you are dizzy, but I hate to tell you and I'm so sorry, but we're going for another spin. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys. That's where we were last time when we were catching up with our friend, Miss Chantel Ray, Miss Foodie Beauty over here, Everyday Miriam. Hey, everybody. It's Ray. It's Life and Vibe. And I cannot believe I am here today again. But then again, I can because Foodie needs to be making her money and getting ready to potentially fly back to Kuwait. I don't know, girl. Let's just double check uh, potentially what they're saying about your likelihood of flying out there anytime soon. Let's just take a quick peek-see. Uh, let's see what's going on over there in Kuwait. Because uh, we know you didn't get to scam your subscribers out of the money for that Kuwait travel. Let's see. Okay. Uh, it says Kuwait overall. Oh, look at that. It says exercise a high degree of caution. Well, that's usually uh, just a statement to make sure that Foodie does the absolute opposite. So she reads that as exercise a high amount of no caution. That's what she sees that as, okay? And then what they said, uh, this is the latest updates. Uh, still current, 15th of April, 2024. And I hope everybody is, you know, obviously we only wish the best for the people who live in Kuwait and their safety. But uh, I think Chantel is going to have to kind of take this up with her therapist. Uh, this is the increased risk of terrorism. There's threats against military bases. Uh, demonstrations and protests could turn violent quickly. They've said avoid large public gatherings, which that's okay. If Foodie was there, she's definitely going to avoid a large public gathering. Uh, follow the advice of local authorities and monitor media for updates. Well, following advice is is obviously, you know, because she's very impulsive, you know. It's not because she's a manipulative narcissist, in my honest opinion. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, before we play her uh, things, that we make sure we play my uh, fair use disclaimers. Um, but I just wanted to make sure we got these travel advisories out here real quick. Um, there is also an increased threat of military and terrorist attacks against Israel and Israeli interests across the region and ongoing military action in the occupied Palestinian territories could lead to increased tensions in other locations in the Middle East. Uh, there could be demonstrations. Uh, this may result in airspace closure flight cancellations, and flight diversions. You could be suddenly sent to a city in the continent of Africa, which is very close to the Middle East. And so you may find yourself so suddenly in Kenya or some other place, foodie. So just be aware. <laughs> and other travel disruptions. And we know that you don't travel really that great. You get very upset even if you are having to walk a little bit of a distance in a Frankfurt airport. So it says they advise, you know, and you can take this how you may, exercise a high degree of caution in Kuwait due to the threat of terrorism. 
So there's a lot of different safety things, and they they say it's they have a low crime rate. Um, so that's good. And extreme weather conditions. And the hottest months are between June and September. Oh wow, it gets really hot and flooding, which we saw some stuff. And there's lots of other things um, that they advise and about women traveling alone out there and all sorts of things. And this is called Smart Traveler. And this is being provided by the Australian government. So thank you so much. We'll make sure we link this down below. Um, so that's the Australian government site. Okay. That's what they're telling their folks. All right. So just to, just as a little bit of a heads up. Um, just to let you guys know. So anyway, let me add myself to the stage again. Hi, everyone. <laughs> let me take this. Uh, let me make myself big here. Let me run all of my disclaimers real quick. And then we'll get into Chantel's latest mukbang. Uh, it is eating Italian poutine uh, from Louis Pizza in my car and apologizing for being a bee. Uh, so I guess that's a clickbait title because I understand there's very little apology in the video. And I also understand that she is not, um, going to do anything that's helping her health because just yesterday or today, goodness me, she was out there with her little planner and she was talking about having her dill rice cakes and her cauliflower crusted pizza. And as one of our great reactors, Miss Rose Thorne Reacts, had commented, it was probably going to sell off a B moment. Having a pizza like that was just going to make her want to have the worst of that Italian food. And foodie is going for it today. So anyway, guys, let's just get these disclaimers out. And if you do like this type of content, you know what to do. Leave me a like, all that good stuff. All right, let me just bring these up because I don't want to get in trouble. And uh, there we go. There's that fair years. And as always, this uh, video here is just for my entertainment purposes to you guys. And you don't have to tip me for it. This is just entertainment. Don't, don't worry. We get paid for Google AdSense if enough folk, you know, watch it. And uh, trigger warning. Because Foodie always, you know, she's going to be talking about her mental health, you know, be, taking up the Canadian healthcare system and so forth. And uh, like I said, if you do like this type of content, hit the subscribes, uh, hit the likes and do all those good things. And we certainly always do appreciate it because that helps us get paid as creators. And that's your way of telling us thank you. So we don't need to be leaving our PayPal handles out in the live stream and frauding people out of money as our friend foodie may do and we have evidence that she has all right so she is just absolutely being negligent about her type 2 diabetes which is unmanaged and uncontrolled she just had a visit to an er in Canada, probably in her hometown of Cornwall, and stated that they said she had norovirus, which is a highly inf con infectious and contagious disease, and she's out there touching everything. But it's quite amazing that within the space of a few days, she is eating food that would not be recommended at all. And she doesn't look too bad. So... Obviously, her blood sugars are always elevated, but certainly the thought is, is that was it really just a run to the hospital because you ate too much and your blood sugars got too high? Well, if that's the case, it's your second, you're preparing for the second run. Your blood sugars anyway, whether it was an infection or not, were going to be elevated worse with an infection. And if she had been binging and having an infection and all of it, then it's even worse. Oh, God, I can't. Anyway, I am a registered nurse, licensed and certified here in the United States. And therefore, uh, even though this is just for education and entertainment purposes only, 
Um, I am obviously licensed to talk about medical stuff. All right, girl, let's get going. Oh, sorry. Let's get going, I said. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> Hello, beezers. Did you know you can now request a personalized video from me on Cameo that you can keep forever and ever? Cameos make great birthday and special uh, occasion gifts. Check the link in the description. Thank you. All right. Uh -oh. All right, let's just read this. I guess she's seen all these trigger warnings and stuff on my page because I do get concerned. But anyway, it says warning if you will complain about eating noises, give you hives. I don't know which channel that came from. You have misophonia. Fat people, and that's not my language, fat people should only eat salad. I don't know who said that. Diabetes and carbs. Oh, no, I'm definitely going to talk about that, girl. Absolutely, all day long. In fact, I've got a special sad pancreas coming just for you. You hate watching people eat. You may want to sit this one out. Well, you know, the taxpayers of Canada cannot sit this one out when you roll yourself over to the emergency room and you're not paying your taxes did you finish filing today was the last day i hope you did i bet you owe well hello guys i have a special treat for myself and for you <laughs> this is the face of defeat because you just saw the travel warnings that we took a look at <laughs> from the Australian government telling her not to uh, fly out to these countries at the moment because there's a little bit of an advisory. So one, she probably didn't scam enough money out of her audience. So she'd have to wait till the 21st of April anyway. Now she realizes that she's getting almost halfway through the month of April and she's had a little bit of content, a little bit of a spike initially with her first video when she came back after her channel's ban. At least we forget she was struck off of YouTube for seven days at the end of March because she was posting hateful comments and making hateful reaction videos live about other creators and probably about the faith she says she's reverted to. So least we forget, barely two weeks ago, this person lost her channel for seven days. <laughs> now she has needed to make up for that lost time in new content. And the content has been uh sketchy and uh has been scammy and grifty and has been trying to use every manipulation tactic that Chantel has in her armory to come on out and try to get all the money that she can from her subs and try to get her views and clickbait and everything else. So whatever girl the only person that you're harming is is one yourself always, okay? Because you're only harming yourself. But it's just getting to the point that you are now harming the healthcare system in Canada. Oh, Lord. All right, keep eating your pancreas out, girl. I never thought I would eat this again. I probably shouldn't, but I mean, I know I shouldn't. <laughs> What do you mean never eat it again? You probably was one of the first things you ate when you came off the plane from 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 Frankfurt. By come on, oh girl, no one believe you. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a Italian Putin. Don't get mad at me, Italians. I know. There's nothing Italian about it. 
that's for sure. Ugh. Well, that's just jiffy. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Uh, I am still kind of shocked and horrified by the size of the portion. And that she is in a core with nothing protecting the sweater. And she's about to eat all of that greasy looking food over there. And uh, she just shows how little this person cares about themselves at the end of the day. All right. You're obviously very upset. You're binging in front of us all. You, I, I mean, this is only harming you. And like I said, the taxpayers in Canada. But they'll let you know about that. They're going to let you. I've heard they'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. And then they're going to really hang you. And yeah, I'm in the Kia. I'm pretty much living in the Kia. <laughs> All right. This is I guess that laugh is uh, because that's true. I mean, you're doing all your content out of the Kia. You're dumping your trash in there. Everything we see is from the Kia. So at this point, we can only assume that you are sleeping somewhere at night at a relative's house. And for the rest of the day, you're in the Kia, which is probably why you don't like the gas prices being very high, which I've said, if this continues in the part of the world that you had been living in, then the gas prices are probably going to go up exponentially soon, just as a reflection of that. So get ready, girl. <laughs> it's going to get expensive living in your car. You're going to wish you never blew through all that money that you did. It's going to be so messy. Oh, my gosh. Actually, it's overflowing. <laughs> Yum. So it's like I would be so nervous to open up anything with that much sauce in my vehicle. Seriously. Not only for the clothing, but for the car itself. She just she's I, I hope you, whoever's paying you for this feeder content today, girl, and your fetish content is paying you enough money to get your car detailed, which I'm hoping you did anyway. But uh, gross. <laughs> I can't even. I'm sure Sansa Cooks is going to give a amount of um, carbs and proteins and Salts and fats. And that's what I'm thinking about here. It's not even just the damage to the pancreas through the amount of carbohydrates. It's also the amount of sodium and stuff and the, the work that she's going to put on her heart muscle. And if something were to happen to her that was a cardiac event, then she is back over to that little Cornwall hospital. And she really, something, I I don't know, just her content is so up and down. And I think this eating is because she's realizing that she's not getting out to Kuwait as she hoped. And so, you know, the way she kind of just stuck her thumb up, you know, fingers up, I should say, and everybody... If, especially after the the pay scam, the PayPal scam, and trying to get the money for the apartment in Canada. And then she turns around and tells everybody that she's going back to Kuwait and that she didn't make that much money from people. And this after she fraudulently obtained that money, she is now having to deal with the fact that she is currently having to stay at can in Canada and she doesn't know for how long. I mean, she could fly out to Kuwait, but they've potentially closed the airspace down. So what could happen is that she just gets stuck or diverted off. And she then has to have the money to take care of herself and Canada not coming in there to rescue her. You make that decision to go you got to figure out how to come out. And from what I've read about, you know, 
medical and being a non-resident in Kuwait and what you can access and where you can access it and the amount of wait time in public hospitals doesn't sound that it's beneficial as a foreigner to be paying for healthcare in Kuwait. And now you don't care about how you go with your health in Canada. All right, I'm going to keep going. Fries, meat sauce, like spaghetti sauce, and mozzarella cheese. And there's a rumor that this place gets their cheese from the mafia. <laughs> Such a stupid rumor, but... I can't believe that you were just in a hospital and you did say you had elevated blood sugars, which you absolutely did. And so whatever type of fluids they had to give you, and along with insulin for sure. Absolutely. Because they had to get your, your blood sugars down. And they use that between a different amounts and different types of fluids because you have to be careful. And, and if you had any type of hyper glycemia or hyperosmolality status or anything going on like that. They, there was a lot of work involved in trying to figure out what type of IV fluids to give you in order to not to cause you to have like a really bad response to a rehydration because your cells are going to be responding and it has to carefully manage the balance between the salt and the potassium and the ion gap in your body, it's it, anion gap. Sorry, let me say that properly. Anion gap. So it it's very complex, but you don't give a monkeys. You just think that you're okay to eat this crap. Get yourself into an issue unless they're giving you insulin now or prescribing you insulin because you're diabetes is becoming less and less manageable or they've changed your medications or something happened that's making you think you got cult blanche to come out and eat all this stuff. It's really disrespectful to the healthcare in that, in the country that you reside in currently. You're really flipping about it too. Look at you. And you're all pleased as punch with yourself as well. I wouldn't be. I'd be horrified. But I'm going to eat some apples after this. <laughs> anyway, oh my gosh. The fork is bending. Oh boy, this is going to be too good. All right, brace yourselves for a sh <laughs> If I could ever get the... This is going to be messy. Sorry if you don't like messiness, but okay. Chantel, the only thing messy is you and your life, girl, the, and this feed of content. That's messy and scamming people fraudulently and being 40 and having nothing. <laughs> That's messy, girl. That's messy. <laughs> and now you can't check in on Salal in the red room. That's messy, too. You got a lot of mess to clean up, girl. Oh, the taxes. Wow. You, 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 you really, ha you all messy. It's messy beyond this nasty stuff you're eating. Cause that looks disgusting. Mm. Gross. I got to speed you up too. I realized that I don't have you fast enough and I'm going to be irritated. Speeding her up. 1.25. What one. is this? Even my tray wouldn't be able to hold this. I don't know where my tray is. Gosh, you guys. So this is from Louis Pizzeria, which is like a classic, which is like an icon around here. But God. Mm. Wow. High quality content, Chantel. You're back in the Kia. You're eating carbohydrate nonsense and you're talking about food. And you're not a food critic. And you're, this is a really sad place to be at your age, girl. <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying it for you. <laughs> it's owned by the friendliest little Greek man. <laughs> 
I haven't had a grape soda in a long time. Oh, she's real mad today. She's really upset. Oh, she's just all out. She either got told some stuff in that HR appointment, whichever that was an acronym for. Somebody was thinking it could be associated with the heart center over at the Ottawa hospital. You know, who knows? Maybe she had to get a, an echo on her heart or some type of heart stress test done. Something, something's triggered her even further. I think it's that fact that she can't get out to Kuwait. She's stuck here in Canada. <laughs> That's obviously bloody awful for a diabetic. I mean, what more can we say? This. Oh, she got a little. Oh, that's for a little tray. I oh, see she's got this down to a science over here with the little cardboard. She kept the cardboard out. And I'm still trying to figure out the poutine that's Italian from the guy who's Greek. <laughs> I know, I know. He's been working there like every day. It used to be he, him and his wife and it's so sad and heartbreaking. Chantel, can you not get that window fixed? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt her story. But she complained the other day about this window being cracked and not being able to get the window up or something. So I think this is actually an issue for her car, which means that if she has any rain or anything, it's coming into the, her vehicle. That's going to make the car smell terrible. Girl, you got to get this fixed. And that's not cheap. I can tell you, getting a window fixed in a car, this this whole mechanic here, this isn't a cheap fix. And she's burnt her bridges on her PayPal at the moment. Because she's, you know... She didn't, she's, uh, she's got to hold that scam off for a little bit. So she's got to up the game on this feeder content. So we're going to see a lot of mug bangs, everybody. Just be, be prepared. But his wife passed away from cancer. I think a few years back. No napkins. What's a napkin? And oh no. Seriously? I want to. That's got to be paid for content. She's got a fork and she just went right to the front and pulled the cheese out and then ate the cheese directly. And that to me seems like that's pay per view content right there. How much do, how much do they get for, how much do they charge you do you charge for that Chantel? Was that $5? What's the going rate for that? Because that's, why would you just pick food? Why would you pick cheese out of a plate when you had the fork sitting there? Makes no sense. Other than the other reason. Elementary school with one of his daughters. And whenever your family owns a restaurant, I used to be so jealous and envious because she could literally call up any hour of the day and ask for food and they would bring it to her but she didn't really eat much oh my goodness you had a problem with food like from childhood that you envied the child whose parents owned the restaurant of course she did i don't think you were being that denied of food wow this is like, this is something deep rooted and deep seated in this from a long time ago, girl. Mm. Well, you'll hear how she likes to address this in a minute. Oh my goodness. Why am I not surprised that she's befriending people whose parents owned restaurants? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, she could have, she would have taken over that child's spot. So every lunch hour at school, while we were eating bagged lunches we were not happy with, 
she would get one of the restaurant's delivery people. They would bring her lunch. They would bring her puts in every day. And she was popular because every day, like she didn't eat much, right? So she would have like, she would take a few mousy bites of the poutine and then give the way a rest to whoever it called dibs first. Hey, you can just imagine Chantel like just pushing and shoving and moving out the way every other kid so she could say dibs man gosh girl how can you anyway i don't even think i remember much about the other kids and food other than their birthday parties i don't remember much about that either I, my most vivid memory of children and food is a young girl who dipped a like a shortbread type cookie into some red colored Kool-Aid when I was a child and it made the cookie soggy and red and she ate it. And that made me feel very unwell. <laughs> so maybe I had quite the opposite relation, <laughs> but that's keep going. She had to, what, where's the apology to so far we're five, six minutes in almost. And all you're talking about is food. Shocker. Shocker. And if you won, it was like winning the lottery. Well, she had to somewhat like you <laughs> as well, obviously, right? <clears throat> so you would have kids like at re the first recess, usually going up to her, running to her, whoever got their first dibs on your dibs on your puts in, Nini. <laughs> oh, gross. Everyone called her Nini. And shocker, Chantel got a story from her childhood because she has stories from no other time. Because she's not actually going to explain to anybody what the HR appointment was. And she's using an acronym on purpose, but she's not going to really say what the appointment was for. Because if it's anything really related to her health, and now she's out here eating this. And anyway, all of her subs should know that she is an unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetic. And even if she were given medications, they are to be managed with proper diet and exercise, none of which Chantel does. <laughs> and so she's going to end up having more medical issues that become more and more severe to the point where she's actually starting to need dialysis because the diabetes is going to get her kidneys at some point too. So well done, Chantel. Who's going to take care of you? I, I, good luck, girl. Keep going. You just had your 40th birthday. You had a channel strike just a couple of weeks. This is your content. Nothing's changed. And now you're just trying to say you're apologizing because you're clickbaiting people. Nobody likes a clickbait. Or in class, <laughs> someone would be brave and like tap her like, hey, Nini, can I have dibs on your potato today at lunch? <laughs> so... Because their gravy, even this sauce, the Italian sauce, homemade, you can tell. And it's like so unique tasting and delicious. Anyway, so I think I got it a couple of times. There was one time I was like her best friend for like a week straight. And she, I had, I got to have puts in like all the time because she was like, no, my best friend's getting it. <laughs> And then in grade, this is the epitome of what this woman's life is. 
stories from her childhood involving food and just eating this in her car alone at 40 talking to a camera and i don't think she's joking about living in that kia because you got to figure something out how long is your family going to keep having you living there because now it, you may have to be there and now you're going to have you're going to go to those medical appointments oh my goodness your life must be terrible at the moment i think grade 8 Grade seven or eight, I was really good friends with her. Oh, God. And she would invite me over. That's a shot for the uh, feeders so that they can see what she's killing her arteries with. She's like, look at this. Look at this. This is what's going to take out my pancreas. This is what's taking out my heart. This is what's taking out my kidneys. Look at me go. Mm. I'll be seeing you in the emergency room soon. <laughs> For sleepovers. All the time. And my mom was probably like, yeah, yeah, please get out of here. Go sleep over at your friends. I'm kidding. Actually, she didn't like me to sleep over too much. but that's because i heard a rumor that the parents would call and complain that you were eating them out of house and home allegedly she didn't like me to sleep there because the parents were always like not there they were always working and she had an older brother who like had always had friends over and their their parents had a bar in the basement and they would get into um the uzo they were greek um so they had a pool, so we would just swim a lot, listen to Weezer. And she was like, Chantel so wishes she was back in those days. You can just tell. You can tell that her adult life is not going as planned. And she just wishes, wishes, sorry, she was 14 years old, lying in a pool getting free food, drinking the parents' ouzo, and not a care in the world. And now she is in Kuwait, practically living out of her Kia and not able to travel to the country that she just tried to use as a fingers up to the reaction and hater community and everybody else and talk about her impulsivity and all her lies impulsive no you're just a manipulative pathological lying narcissist in my opinion just for education information purposes only if you're hungry just order something from the restaurant so like i would just pick up the phone the restaurant's on speed dial and i would order like hey can i have pizza can i put in <laughs> See, Chantel hasn't apologized because she's got to get you through so she can start making that ad sense and make that money. You know, this is how these creators do it, okay? So she's going to make you suffer through this slop first to, to, to get to her lousy apology. So keep going, girl. So all that to say, when I come here, back to Canada... I get very nostalgic to eat all of the things that I used to love or all of the things that used to be like comfort foods, you know? You say that every time you come back to Canada. I think everyone gets the picture now. You come back and you stuff your face with poutine, okay? And you, and you eat a bunch of stuff you shouldn't be. And you talk about your comfort foods, okay? Like, that's an excuse like, oh, it's my comfort food to be this negligent on your pancreas all the time. I, I mean, you're the one who's going to go blind. And you're not wearing your glasses, I noticed today. So you're in a real effing mood. Glasses are gone. I guess the, the, the 15 slash 30 minute walk is out the window. Those rice cakes, they've been chucked to the bin. 
Oh, Lord. You know, you're probably not checking your blood sugars. <laughs> it's just like, ah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You can just see how hard I'm laughing over here. Oh, goodness. Mm, girl, I shouldn't be laughing, but it's bad. The last video she put out, she literally was sitting with a today planner, to do planner, and like trying to show that she's like all healthy and stuff. And now, like literally a few hours later, she posts a video where she's taking out her pancreas and says, the hell with it all. <laughs> And you know it, she's because she's mad because she can't go to Kuwait at the moment. Oh, she's mad about it. <laughs> Grape soda. <laughs> it's always my favorite. So. Oh. Oh. Ah. Chantel's doing the work for us. Oh, that's so sweet of you, girl. She just gave you a little bit of a close-up of the fact that she obviously got her sleeve and the sauce. Well, we knew that was going to happen, girl. That's one of your new Pennington outfits, probably. So what were you thinking? Mm. <laughs> it's honestly the best. It really is. There's not many halal recipes. I hope it was worth your pancreas and your heart. I hope all of this food that you are going, yum, 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 all of it, I hope it's worth your health. Because there does come a time when they can't rescue you at the hospital anymore. Okay? And you're one of these people with the way you're going, you're going to be very difficult. So you're either just on a death wish. And you just don't understand in reality because you abuse the healthcare system in your country. Restaurants, maybe uh, a couple. There's like shawarma places. And there's one halal restaurant I want to try, but it's closed for eat until like the 18th. Mm. I have my counseling. Oh, and that, you know, so I'm just going to be eating, you know, Greek, Italian beef poutine sauce with gravy because oh well you know i can't i can't find halal in a, in a restaurant girl i don't think that excuse is gonna fly in canada okay promise you i've had friends of mine who are muslims who've lived in mexico and they've managed to remain halal so you just are a lazy Liar. <laughs> what else can we say? Call our descriptor. <laughs> on the 18th. I actually looking forward to talking to someone about my feelings about what's going on with everything. You know, there's been so much that's happened in my life since. The last time I ever had therapy, which I think was like a while ago. Anyway. Huh. You mean you haven't been addressing your mental health for decades? As it was the last time you had any was forced upon you by your family? I mean, it's not unusual for somebody who's as sort of toxic as Chantel not to really get help because they're the most difficult people to treat. So for everybody out there who thinks that this individual here is going to have some sort of uh, 180 turn around and start to address her mental health or her physical health or anything, she's not, okay? That's why we saw one day where she is, you know, sitting there with that planner and she was very petulant about having to go to an appointment and having to go out and walk. And I think that's because she was with her aunt for the day. And her aunt wanted to see her 
you know, doing, probably taking the walk and stuff to get her better. And, you know, maybe it was after the appointment. Who knows? Because Chantel's timelines are so terrible. But once the person who's not influencing her to have that activity, this is what she'll choose to do. Sit in the car, eat this garbage, drink that garbage, not give a crud. And yeah, I do hate it. Because I don't like talking about these things, really. But I'm going to do it. Well, that's kind of a lie, because you're talking right here in the camera and using it continuously to, to manipulate and scam money out of your audience. So you continuously trauma dump on your subscribers, your audience, and anybody who's unfortunate enough to have discovered your content. You are the queen of the trauma dump. You have actually come onto your channel and said to your people that you are so glad that they are there because you need the support and all of that. So you do. When you can monetize it and you're making money from it, oh, girl, you're happy to talk about it all day long, I'm sure. But the minute it's about you having to actually sit down with a professional and have them ask you questions that you are uncomfortable in having to answer because it requires reflection and self-reflection, then you are just not for it because you're a malignant narcissist probably <laughs> in my just guesstimation. I'm not a mental health nurse. I'm just saying, <laughs> but. I've obviously studied some psychology along the way. And uh, most doctors will say, you know, but we're not psychologists. That's not what we deal in the respect that, you know, a lot of times we're not going to be treating them for that. But sometimes if you're in primary care, you could be treating for depression. It's just the other complex mental health disorders that often were, uh, primary cares and so forth would not necessarily work with and may then refer them to another specialist because their needs are much more intricate. Oh God, of course you are. I don't want to talk to somebody because that means me doing work. Oh. oh, and she's probably getting it for free. So how about that one guys? Okay, so for anybody who's an American subscriber and you've donated to this person and then you're trying to figure out how you're gonna pay for your stuff or make your bills or this, that and the other, you, you've got all grumpy pants over here complaining about her free mental health appointment free free because she doesn't even pay her taxes so it's absolutely free for her at the moment oh won't, won't be able to eat all this i can tell you yes you can an absolute <laughs> lie lie that's an absolute lie look at the face see that that says to, to me i'm a big old liar over here I'm just full of the lies, full of the lies. We're back here. I should have made her small, me smaller. I apologize, guys. Let me get down a little bit smaller there. There we go. Should have checked earlier. I apologize. All right. Keep going, Chantel. Definitely will have leftovers. <laughs> Did she say she was going to have leftovers? Lies. <laughs> so I'm not sure when I'm leaving. I'm not even sure what I'm doing with my life, but I'm just taking it day by day for now. Um, I'm getting very worried about the situation in the Middle East, honestly. I know I don't typically talk about politics on my channel, but like, I'm legit worried about like, like I, there's like Iran has now. Were you watching me today? Because I said almost that exact same phrase that I don't typically talk about politics on my channel. I said that exactly on my live stream today that I unfortunately had to take down. But I said because of it, it was a it, it was a song. 
<laughs> so I have to fix everything. That's okay. You live and learn. Anyway, uh, that's what I said. Exact. I was like, you using my words, girl, because that sounds like my voice, not yours. I'll hear my voice when you speak. Don't you worry. All of us reactors do. Because you have no personality of your own. So you have to adopt everybody else's. You should be worried. You're not going to be able to fly into the Middle East. Struck Israel and it's like. In retaliation. Or their embassy being bombed or, you know, I just. I think that's what happened. So things are getting bad over there. You know, and I just worry. Obviously. What Chantel worries about is not probably Salal's safety or even Julia Howie's safety. What Chantel worries about is Chantel. Chantel is worried that she is now not able because of a conflict happening in the world. She's not worried about the people over actually in the Middle East. She's not worried about if they actually, you know, all these people's lives are potentially in jeopardy. That they are having possibly, you know, really tough times coming ahead. And we can only hope and pray that these things will be resolved quickly and without any loss of lives. That's what we, that's what we want to happen. But Chantel just worried about herself and not being able to leave Canada after she just supposedly, you know, stuck her fingers up to everybody. Because she had no intention of staying in Canada. She was just coming over for a cash grab, whether it's a crash, cash grab with her family, getting birthday gifts, getting birthday meals, getting a little bit spoiled, also being able to go and bees a little bit in her favorite fast food places, Go get her Mary Jane. Go get high. Because she's probably high eating this for sure. Absolutely. You know, this, uh, I can see it in her eyes. Uh, you know, doing all these things that she enjoys doing. And then she was able to stick her fingers at everybody up. Because she was going back to Kuwait. And now she's suddenly not making a lot of money on YouTube. She is at, in Kuwait. I mean, not in Kuwait. In Canada. Can't see when to leave. Where is she going to stay? She got a lot going on. She really does. But unfortunately, she's not going to correctly use the professional that she's going to meet. So she'll be petulant about it because she supposedly knows better than everybody else. But Chantel only care about Chantel. That's the only person. I just want to say like a genuine I'm sorry for like if I was ever mean to you because I've lashed out at viewers I've been pretty nasty I've said some mean things even if it's out of anger self-defense whatever you know I really don't like being that way and hurting other people so if I hurt you if I'm responsible for that or offending you I apologize like truly I do and that just includes everybody. And I'm sorry, you know, for things I've said. She can barely look at the camera when she's saying this, which means she's devious in my mind. She is not sorry. What she's sorry for is the loss of her views, the loss of the engagement to her content. When people go to her lives, they're barely leaving any super chats. They are going to find her despicable for having tried to scam the amount of money for an apartment in Canada that she never had. Now I think they can see she's no intention of ever having stayed in Canada. And that was a complete lie to manipulate her audience. She uses her animals at every opportunity to manipulate her audience. She manipulates her audience about her health, but then she comes out and eats this crap. That's the only thing she's sorry about. She's not sorry about actually doing anything to hurt anybody or having been offensive. What this biatch is sorry about is that she's losing money because of it now. It was all fine and dandy when she was 
making a lot of money from that type of behavior. But now that she's not able to be the uh, just got a seven day strike and come back with all these Beezers just throwing her a ton of money, I think she was pretty surprised at probably just how few the views really were and how little money and probably how much super chat she really got, even after a seven day. I think she is starting with her audience is just getting less and less smaller and smaller i think she even saw that with the paypal scam right i think she's and so now she's forced to have to make this pathetic apology which isn't an apology at all so way to go chantel said uh recently or during cuba rage pathetic You're not sorry. I hated my existence back then. You know? But it's no excuse. I have to be... All right, Chantel. These are things that you talk about with your therapist that you're supposed to go see on the 18th first. And then you decide how are you going to approach an apology that is heartfelt and genuine. Not that you're a manipulative narcissist who is using your audience and trying to gain money and now you're not making money from your youtube and you're stuck with feeder content and you're going to kill yourself with it so go ahead go finish it out be careful about how i treat people how, how i talk to people you know that's the only thing i can control losing my channel for a week like getting a strike for my behavior towards another person was eye-opening for me because I was like, but I was responding to somebody hating on me and it doesn't matter. See, no, no, listen right here, okay? She's not learned anything. I'm gonna stop you right there because she's already going back to play with the other person. And when you truly learn a lesson, you don't bring the other person into it. You move on properly from it. That's not an apology. You're still mad about it. You learned nothing. I wish they struck you down for good, girl. Bye. Matter. Like it doesn't matter. That sounds so juvenile. Like I do need to grow up in that way. I need to accept that. I can't stop. I'm on the internet. I can't stop people from hating on me. No, not everyone's gonna like me. You know. No people one likes. Gonna you. Call me names or whatever, and just point. You know, point things out about me. Whatever. They're gonna criticize me. And, you know, I look like crap. Going back and and you know raging against something that I don't like and doing the same thing you know, calling someone names or whatever. So it was, it was eye-opening for me. Don't believe this. She's a pathological liar and a narcissist in my professional thoughts. So this is just her trying to manipulate her audience, okay? It's just she's upset because she can't make money. So she's now stuck with having to do the worst apology ever. <laughs> okay, Colleen Ballinger. Honestly, about my own behavior. And I don't like myself that way. <laughs> yes, you do. You absolutely do. You love yourself. You think you're a gone queen, girl. You're just saying things that you think will appease people. That's what you're doing. Because Shifty Eyes here needs to make cash. Okay? And now she's in Canada and the funds are running low. And she's still got to pay for the stuff in, in Kuwait. So she's really got to up the game because she's got two paces to play for now because we know the husband got no job. She said that. So I have spaghetti sauce now with like the kids in first grade. Remember I told you about that guy? <laughs> Nobody cares. I got this shirt as a gift for my birthday as well. I had a birthday celebration in private with Salah. I think I was on a strike anyways. <laughs> And we went to my favorite restaurant and um, he got me like a bunch of like Arabic desserts and he paid for my my new glasses. So, Salah obviously trying to kill her. <laughs> because if he was concerned about her health and knowing she's an unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetic with non-fatty alcohol, liver and heart disease probably for, for sure. 
and uh, help no gallbladder i mean two pe's the comorbidities and the list of history is ridiculous and he's out there giving like baklava and uh also paid for most of the trip here so and then I got from my family, we had some celebrations with different family members because I kind of just bounce around when I'm here. <laughs> oh, gosh. You, uh, listen to it. She's kind of bouncing around and laughing. Girl, it's not going to be funny in about two weeks when they're telling you to find a permanent place to be in. That's not going to be so funny when you really are camping out of that Kia. So every creator that you have ever said anything, and that's why you're trying to up this game. Because you need to get somewhere to live. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I got to make this faster, though. And I got a bunch of clothes. I'll have to show you guys everything. Some really cute things. And um, I'll do a separate vlog about my birthday. Like, I'll try to. I'll show you guys what I got and stuff. Why? Your birthday was, like, almost, like, two weeks ago in March. Why would anybody care now to see your 40th birthday gifts? And how are you, what, are you going to keep showing them in your car? Like that Timu bag with the Winnie the Pooh, Alice in Wonderland? What the bejesus was that? <laughs> the, the Frankenstein thing? I can't take it, girl. <gasps> because you are so manipulative. <laughs> oh and you try to get sympathy because you're bouncing around you're getting what you deserve okay for all the ways you have treated now you're apologizing trying to kiss up to your subscribers now oh so the next time you go live they thank you for having you know those people that you apologize for, they're not even the people that want those good people gone, girl. They clocked out on you a while back ago. Anyway, I will do some live streams, just maybe like uh, tomorrow or something. Oh, okay. I just have been really sick. I can't believe that, but now I'm better, obviously. <laughs> uh, what do you mean you're really sick? The bagel video you were selling everyone how great you felt. So which, which manipulation tactic about your health are you trying to use today? Because eating that stuff is not going to garner any sympathy from anybody. And you out here trying to call it comfort food when you just were inside of a hospital where they were obviously, whatever going on, they were definitely treating the diabetes type 2 uncontrolled and unmanaged. However you got that blood sugar elevated. And obviously through food. So however, girl. It's not funny. The only person laughing is you. Because I think everyone else stopped laughing a while back ago. Well, oh no, that's not true. Because there's lots of people who come into my comments and tell me how they laugh at you. So yeah, people are laughing at you, but not in the way you think. <laughs> when I was sick, I swore. I'm like, I'm never eating another bad thing for me ever again. Anyway, I'm not going to eat the rest of this. I'm going to pack it up and uh you know i'm still eating like some pack it up so in about an hour i can eat the rest of it so stop lying and you're you keep it in your car so eat it quick go because you gave yourself another round of food poisoning okay because if you're keeping food that's got like meat and stuff like that and i know it's a little bit chillier in canada but i don't know if it's like ch fridge chili i don't know maybe it is but I'm just saying that food could, you know, after a certain amount of time, you're supposed to refrigerate it to a certain temperature. Otherwise, it can make you sick. So what the bejesus do you have going on? And then when you get sick like that and you throw up and you get dehydrated, that makes your blood sugars even worse. And it's like it's a trifecta of how it just hits everything. And so, and then you start damaging organs along the way. So this may be funny to you, but for anybody with half a brain, you just, it's not funny. It's really not funny. The crap stuff. And, you know, I'm going to try to wean off of it, but. Oh, and eat less lying. of it. 
but uh, it's hard. Like I said, it's like mixed in with nostalgia. It's weird. Oh, oh. Anyway. See the uh, and the way she fluttered her eyes up, like oh, oh. Uh, uh, for those of you who just get really nostalgic about food, oh, you must really, uh, you know, relate to me. Aren't I relatable? Because I'm just a hot mess. You are a hot mess. Relatable, you're not. <laughs> That's how I think Tammy Slayton. She was asked, like, you know, how she lost weight. She had the surgery, but also. She said she would still eat things like spaghetti and pizza, but just like way less. So like when she was in the, uh, I think this was before her surgery though, actually, when she was in the rehab facility, they would give her spaghetti, but just like less of it with some salad or pizza, maybe one slice. So I just have to like, you know, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Ugh. Let me get rid of her. Oh my goodness, guys. That was obviously just a Chantel lie fest. And I took too long to review a very short video. <laughs> so let me get this thing posted up. If you do like this type of content, uh, leave me a plate of spaghetti. We're doing plates of spaghetti because Chantel don't care. Plates of spaghetti, everybody. Leave me a plate of spaghetti. All right, guys. I appreciate it if you did get this far watching. Two hit the likes, you know, subscribe. See you later. And uh, just make sure you guys are out there washing your hands.